Okay, so now I've got the ECU wiring loom adapter finished. I'm going to start my first little project. Um, like I said in the video where we made and installed this, it can now be used to intercept any of the signals to and from the ECU or even bypass them. So what I want to do first is to uh, completely bypass the knock sensor um, from the ECU. Uh, these cars are getting quite old in age now and um, the reason I'm doing this is that knock sensors are prone to pick up a lot of interference and noise and uh, therefore altering your timing uh, when you don't want it to be altered can result in the car running a bit rough or even going into limp mode sometimes. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that. Never had my car knock before that I know of. Always run it on 98 octane fuel, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, it's quite easy circuit to make. So got my parts here. Um, first of all, I've got a little jiffy box or a bulkhead enclosure depending on what you like to call it. I've got a proto board. Uh, can't buy one resistor, so I have to buy a pack. But I've got a pack of um, 560k ohm resistors, which we're going to use one of those. And we've got our ECU pinout and the details of the knock sensor circuit and how it works, how to test it. So that's going to give, this, give us the information on how to bypass it. Okay. So, here's our original circuit, just has a lead straight from the ECU. This one here, on pin 36, which is this one. Now if you see that on our pinout, it's listed here as I'll just get that in view for you. Pin 36 knock sensor. Okay, it's got the map of the the uh, connectors here, which we can see here. Now, first thing you need to check when you're looking at a pinout is which way these are drawn. So sometimes they're drawn looking into the pins. Sometimes they're drawn looking into the ECU. So the way we figure that out is by the colours and the position of the pins. A uh, good way to do that also is by the position of unused or missing pins, like 42 is missing. So if we find 42 on the smallest connector and see which one's missing, so this one, 42, if it's looking into the plug, it should be the top left hand side which is missing, which it is. But if it was the other way around, top left hand side of the ECU connector there's a pin there with a white lead with a yellow trace. Anyway I've already done that so this particular pin out is looking at the loom plugs. Okay so we want knock sensor pin 36 which is on the middle size black connector bottom left hand side and it's telling us that the lead or the wiring should be white in color. So, middle, middle size black connector, bottom left hand corner, pin 36, should be white, which it is there. There it is. So, the, we're going to alter this circuit now. So, instead of looking like this, <coughs> you might wonder why there's only one lead to the knock sensor on the Series 2. EA82, they are and they use a one wire knock sensor and they just measure resistance across knock sensor to ground. So I'm just going to draw that in there to illustrate. So our body of our knock sensor which screws into the block is grounded. So we're going to alter this circuit from this. We're going to have our little Intercept a box here with our resistor in it. So instead of coming 
from the ECU straight to the knock sensor. We're going to cut it. Completely isolate it. And I'm going to come from the ECU lead, this pin 36, straight into our interceptor box through the resistor, and then to our body ground. And that's going to simulate the knock sensor. Now, to get our uh, value of our resistor, we use the factory, the factory check sheet for the knock sensor. <coughs> And our flow chart here, a few steps if you're checking it uh, to see if the knock sensor was any good or not. We're not going to do that. What we want is just a value of the knock sensor so we can simulate it. So it's telling us to check if resistance between terminal 36, which is the one from our ECU, and it's white, and the body, which is ground is anywhere between 532 and 588,000 ohms. So we can have our resistance anywhere within that range and it won't upset our ECU and put it into limp mode or put the ECS light on. So that's where our resistors come in. 560,000 ohms comes in to that range. So that's the one we're going to use. So all we need to do now is get our probe all ready, solder our resistor across there and a lead from this white lead which is in our adapter loom so we're not actually touching the loom of the car. I'm going to cut it, insulate this side of it, that's just pretend it's not even there anymore and then this is our simulated knock sensor. So we're going to do that now. Okay, so um, there's the little knock bypass circuit made in the box. I had a lot of trouble trying to solder to the proto board. Well, not trying to solder to it, but I had trouble with the uh, the tracks coming off the board. So I had to try and try a few different configurations with the wiring, but I got there eventually. Um, what I ended up doing was soldering across a few pads for a little bit of extra support, putting the wire through the holes as well. So I originally had some thicker wiring, which was matched the color for the loom that we were using, a white and then a black for the ground. So now I've gone to a, a smaller gauge. I'll use a green red for the, for the knock and um, a black yellow for the ground, which doesn't matter, but it just sort of looked a bit prettier. So that's all inside now and the box is screwed up. Plenty more room for other um, proto circuits in there as well. A bit of hot glue to stop it rattling and uh, stop the vibration pulling off the board and everything. So now I'm just going to check the resistance across there to see if we've got our 560,000 ohms. Lovely, so that's ready to install. Check that circuit. So now up in the boot and um, plug it in. Okay, so there's the box fitted up under the parcel shelf. I've just got it zip tied in because it's only really, really light and there's no need to make proper mounting brackets for it because um, this is only going to be, you know, an experimental thing, so it's going to be in and out. Probably not even permanent. So there's our little leads running along. Tapping into our knock wire on the ECU. Just 
this here. Got a ground ring on this little bolt. That's one of the um, mounting bolts for the ECU. Got this mounted straight to the body, so it's an okay ground. And the ECU, the adapter, wires to the interceptor. Cool. So I've just connected the battery back up. And we've got all this connected now. So let's see how it runs and see if it behaves how it's supposed to. It's a bit bright there, but there's our check engine light. After it started, that should go out and stay out. And it does. Nice one.